Hello all, in today's class I am going to discuss the current issue which is quite highlighted in the news and it's basically about rupee depreciation. So it has happened for the first time that rupee has touched to 80. So dollar one is equal to rupees 80. Earlier it used to hover around 70, 72, 75, 76 but for the first time this number has reached. Now why it has moved to 80, why it has depreciated so much, what are the reasons, why, what are its implications in the economy, what we should do so that it should not depreciate to 80, all these things we are going to discuss in this class. So first thing is that uh, before we go into all these impacts and issues, first you should understand that what does this mean and how this rate gets impacted. So we have a forex market, foreign exchange market, foreign exchange, it is an online market regulated by RBI. So in this forex market, rupee and dollars are traded, rupee and dollars are traded. So when foreign investors are coming in, they are bringing in dollars. They sell dollars, they demand rupees. So when they sell dollars and demand rupees, rupee appreciates. And when investors want to move out of India, so suppose investors are presently in India and they want to sell and return to US. So they will sell their business in India. Then they get rupees. Of course, they, if they will sell their business in India, they will get rupees. Then that rupee, they will sell in this forex market and purchase dollars to move out of India, right? So when they foreign investors in India when they want to move out of India, they sell their business in India, they get rupees, that rupee they sell here and they demand dollars. So dollar starts appreciating and rupee starts depreciating. So basically when investors are moving out of India, rupee depreciates, right. So based on the demand and supply of rupee and dollar, this rate is determined, dollar and rupee rate, this is basically the demand and supply of rupee and the demand and supply of dollar. So if the demand of rupee is more, rupee will appreciate. If the demand of dollar is more, dollar will appreciate. So it depends only on two factors, demand and supply of rupee and dollar. But demand and supply of rupee and dollar depends on several other factors. As I said, if foreign investors are moving out of India, then demand and supply of rupee gets impacted. If investors are coming into India, then demand and supply of rupee gets impacted. If students from India are going abroad for studying or people from India are going abroad for tourism purpose, then demand of rupee and dollar gets impacted. So demand of rupee and dollar can get impacted because of several reasons. If we are importing a lot, then the demand of rupee and dollar will get impacted and this rate gets impacted, right? So there could be several reasons for this rupee or dollar rate change. Now let us see that what were the reasons in the present context, what were the reasons because of which rupee does this rupee uh, dollar. Uh, dollar one is equal to rupees 80. When we got independence, it was around dollar one is equal to rupees two, three. So from rupees two, three, it has come down to 80 rupees. Rupee has basically lost value. So at independence, it was dollar one is equal to rupees two or three. And now it is here. We will discuss also those reasons. So what are the present reasons why rupee has depreciated? As you know that uh, US Federal Bank has increased their, listen carefully. US Federal Bank has increased their interest rate. Now when US interest rate increases, a lot of foreign portfolio investors who have invested in India in bonds, now if they are getting more interest rate in US, they will try to return. Now it may be possible that present interest rate in India is 7% and in US it is just 5%. But still, this is India and this is US. So US interest rate, this 5% interest rate in US is quite high relative to their earlier situation. So earlier it used to be 2%, 3%, now it is 5%. So this is quite high if they compare from previous situation. But still it is below than India. Then why foreign portfolio investors from India, bond investors are moving to US? Because when they come to India to invest, this may be looking high to you, but they need to pay hedging cost to minimize their risk. Because when they come to India and they invest in these bonds or shares, and they want when they want to return, 
if the rupee depreciates they may lose so they do hedging they ask for a kind of insurance they do hedging now taking care of hedging cost their return in india decreases so if they want to hedge their investment in india protect their investment in india and for that if they need to pay 2 3% then the return in india is less than the us so whenever us starts increasing the interest rate a lot of foreign portfolio investors generally bond investors they start returning to us so when they are moving out of india the reason the logic i said rupee starts depreciating because they sell the investments in india they get rupee they sell rupee in the forex market they demand dollars dollar starts appreciating rupee starts depreciating okay so fpi is moving out of india and why us interest rate is increasing because us has the inflation in us is around 8 percent 9 percent which is which is the highest since last 40 years us inflation has increased to very high level of 8 percent 9 percent so that's why us federal bank is increasing the interest rate so one reason is investors moving out of india second is because of the higher commodity prices fertilizer oil gas because of the russia ukraine war these prices have increased of oil gas fertilizer and other commodities so when the prices have increased and we are importing these commodities so we need to pay more dollars we need to pay our importers our traders who are importing these items since prices have increased they will need to pay more dollars so to pay more dollars they will have to purchase more dollars from the forex market when they purchase more dollars from the forex market the demand for dollar increases and dollar appreciates rupee depreciates so second is higher commodity prices of oil and gas fertilizers etc third reason increasing current account deficit it has touched to around 3.3% in april june quarter when our current account deficit increases then it creates a pressure on rupee current account deficit increases means we are importing more right when imports starts increasing then it creates a, then it impacts rupee dollar rate how it impacts a little bit technical let me explain you so what i am going to explain you that if forex reserves forex reserves when current account deficit increases of course our forex reserve will decline right current account deficit is increasing means we are requiring more dollars to import so when we require more dollars to import forex reserves starts decreasing and when forex reserves starts decreasing that has a that has a depreciating effect on rupee so dollar and rupee so this i told you that this forex market determines rupee dollar rate right demand supply of this but there suppose there are two cases there are two cases one is a uh, 600 dollar billions 600 billion dollars forex one is a uh, 300 so every situation remains same everything remains same first case we have 600 billion dollar of forex second case we have 300 billion dollar of forex so in which case rupee the impact on rupee depreciation will be more in this case in this case rupee will start depreciating why because see try to understand if rupee starts depreciating here then what happens rbi intervenes in the forex market so when rupee starts depreciating rbi sells the forex reserve into this market So when our rupee starts depreciating and RBI sells the forex reserves here, supply of dollars increases. When supply of dollars increases, dollars starts depreciating and rupee starts uh, appreciate. So RBI sells the forex here, supplies the forex uh, dollars here to appreciate rupee. Now, 
if we have if we don't have any dollars here or if we have less dollars here then this information goes in this market and it creates a negative impact on rupee and rupee starts to appreciate if suppose this rate is dollar 1 is equal to rupees 80 now if there is no dollars left here in the forex reserves now everyone will knows that rbi will not be able to protect rupee by selling dollars so it starts depreciating it has a negative impact so if dollar reserves decreases that information that has a negative impact on rupee and rupee starts depreciating right so this is also very important reason so when current account deficit or current account deficit is at quite higher level 3.3 percent so current account deficit increasing that means we are importing more if we are importing more our dollar reserves are decreasing and when dollar reserves are decreasing rupee starts depreciating right so these are the reasons why rupee depreciated to 80 earlier uh, in 2013 rupee dollar rate test to around 76 76 point something and then it came back but this time it has moved to this right now what is rbi's policy regarding rupee depreciation so when rupee starts depreciating when rupee starts depreciating what does rbi do and why does it do that so when rupee starts depreciating rbi intervenes in the forex market now let me make it very clear that dollar 1 is equal to rupees 80 now whenever rupee depreciates rbi does not intervene see two three things let me make it very clear there is no rate which rbi is targeting rbi has not targeted that rupees should not depreciate beyond 80 no this is not so market discovers this rate but then why rbi intervenes rbi intervenes to remove the volatility if let me tell you that if rupee starts depreciating and in the next 10 years if rupee moves from 80 to 90 then rbi will not intervene so RBI does not intervene in the forex market to control the depreciation, to remove the depreciation. But RBI intervenes in the forex market to remove the volatility. So if rupee is depreciating very slowly with time, then RBI may not intervene. If rupee starts appreciating and there is too much of volatility, then again RBI intervenes. So whether depreciation or appreciation, RBI intervenes in both the cases if there is high volatility. If rupee starts appreciating very slowly, RBI may not intervene. So, but if there is too much of volatility, then RBI wants to remove that volatility because that volatility has a negative impact on macroeconomy stability. But RBI does not target any rate, RBI just wants to remove the volatility in the forex market. And RBI has said that RBI has given total freedom to rupee to find its own market value. So, RBI has left the rupee that whatever market decides that rate will be that rate will be decided. But if there is too much of volatility, then of course RBI intervenes. Now, how RBI intervenes? How RBI intervenes? So, RBI asks banks. So, RBI can sell dollars or purchase dollars from you. RBI generally does not do directly. RBI asks banks to sell or purchase dollars. So, this time when rupee started depreciating and it touched 80, RBI asked banks that you start selling dollars in this forex market so banks on the behalf of rbi they sell dollars when they sold dollars here supply of dollars increased dollars started depreciating rupees started depreciating but just to reduce the volatility impact of rupee depreciation first of course, if rupee is depreciating, then all the imported items become costlier because if rupee is depreciating, you need to pay more rupee to get the same amount of dollars. So, imported inflation. Second, going abroad becomes costlier. going abroad becomes costlier and try to understand one more thing 
if rupee is depreciating in rup if rupee is depreciating in india inflation will start increasing and if inflation increases then again rupee depreciates then again rupee depreciates why i will tell you so impact of rupee depreciation imported inflation and going abroad becomes costlier and if it's invest if it's depreciates too much then the foreign investors who have invested in india if they will try to go uh, move back then they lose if they have not held then they lose so if rupee depreciates too much of course positive impact is exports become co uh, competitive imports become costly imports but exports become competitive and imports become costly right so impact of rupee depreciation now and see inflation don't just think that rupee just impacted inflation inflation can impact a lot of macroeconomic parameters in because of higher inflation employment can get impacted economic growth can Im get impacted investment can get impacted so all the macroeconomic parameters are linked with inflation so it's this is a very important term the whole macroeconomic policy changes so don't just think that rupee depreciation impacts inflation inflation of course it impacts inflation but inflation has a larger impact on various macroeconomic parameters but if we don't want rupee to depreciate if you want to prevent rupee depreciation that it should never go to 80 after going to 80 rbi has done certain things sold dollars but if we want that rbi should not uh, rupee should not depreciate then what we can do to know this to know this you must understand that why rupee depreciates why rupee depreciates so right now dollar 1 is equal to rupees 80 now why it depreciates one important reason is so in general see right now <coughs> imports became costly and investors are moving abroad these are these situations will happen once in a while i am not talking about that i am talking that in the long run if we don't want rupee to depreciate then what should we do so how this rate is determined right now dollar 1 is equal to rupees 80 so inflation in us and inflation i am talking about long term trend inflation in india if inflation in listen carefully if inflation in india is higher then inflation in us then rupee will depreciate with respect to dollar if inflation in india is higher that means rupee is losing value with respect to all goods and services so when rupee loses value with respect to all goods and services rupee loses value with respect to dollar side for example so in uh, suppose 2022 this was the rate now next year in 2023 inflation in us is 5% and inflation in india is 9% so when i say inflation in india is 9% that means rupee lost value by 9% dollar lost value by 5% that means on a relative basis on a relative basis the rupee lost value by 4% with respect to dollar so ultimately this will depreciate by 4% you can say so relative inflation impacts this on a long term basis right so relative inflation should be low now post independence always india has higher inflation as compared to the developed nation so if india has higher inflation means rupee is losing value higher inflation means rupee is losing value with respect to goods and services so rupee loses value with respect to dollar so also. so if you want to prevent rupee depreciation the inflation in india should be less now how can inflation be less
increase efficiency increase efficiency productivity but better productivity expenditure on expenditure on infra to bring down cost to bring down cost of production so if you will spend on infrastructure cost of production will come down logistics cost as you know it's quite high in india 13 to 14 percent of gdp logistics cost should come down so to reduce inflation in the long run our whole economy should be quite competitive cost of production of goods and services should be less the inflation will be less and that can come from better infrastructure and logistics so we should work on that making econ overall economy making more efficient then in the long run rupee may not depreciate right and so as such rupee depreciation has some positive and negative impacts both but of course if rupee is depreciating that means rupee is losing value so in some context it's positive for exporters but negative for all the people who are going abroad whenever you want dollar you'll have to pay more right so on the in the long term we can follow these things to control rupee depreciation to or to make rupee appreciate these steps can be taken so that's all for today's class thank you